So first we have a view simulator. This would in real life be a video streaming server or something similar where we get some raw usage information representing one person viewing one movie. So here we have a technical user ID, a movie title, a timestamp when they watched it, how many seconds they watched, and some meta information about the device. Alright, so this is the first step. We will now take this raw usage data, which we see coming into this function here, then we will enrich it. So we will add some information. Who is this user ID 1? Well, actually, it turns out to be John Doe with this email, born this year, living in this country, and with this plan. This is an enrichment that you typically do looking up this data in your billing system or your CRM system like Salesforce or something similar, wherever you keep your customer profiles. Now we will do exactly the same thing, but instead of enriching the user information, we will figure out which product the user is using. We know the movie title, so based on the title, we can go to a product database. This can also be your billing system, or a product catalog, or a CPQ system, or wherever you keep a product inventory. And as you see here, to this these records, we now add further information about who owns this movie title, what is the revenue sharing model we should use for this partner, when was the movie made, and what is the full duration in seconds for this movie. This information will become useful further down. Alright, so we have now collected the raw data, we have enriched the data with user and product business information. Let's start doing some transformations. So the first thing is very simple. We will just calculate a view percent, like how many seconds did the user watch out of the total length of the movie. Adding this new field here, we see that, okay, we have some people who roughly watch half the movie, some of them watch it to completion. So this is good to know. Now we can take these events and look first at what we do with them to send them to billing for this pay-per-view time plan. The first thing we're going to do is to aggregate all the view events over a month for a particular user. So coming in we have individual view events, going out we can see that now there's just one line for John Doe, one line for Penny Lane, one line for Meng Chao, with a total view duration out of a total full duration possible, and how many times they have watched movies. We do this by setting up an aggregation here where we can say that I want to sum up these fields, I want to take the last value from the last record of these fields, I want to count that field. And thus I end up with these aggregate records. Alright, then we talked about nudging and classifying users, so let's look at that. Here we do a couple of simple calculations to decide is this user at risk of churning or not? And is this user a light, standard or heavy user? So we add those fields again to the record here. And we use them to build messages to the subscriber. Ah oh yeah, we also calculate their total average view percent. So then we can create a metrics message which can be included on the invoice. You have watched totally 20 movies and you completed 52%. And then we have a nudge message saying maybe you would be interested in our pay-per-view plan. So if it's a light user at risk of churning, then we give this nudge message that can be, for example, presented on the invoice or given as an offer. If it's a standard user, like in the middle of normal usage, we just say thank you. And if it's actually a standard user with a very high usage, we nudge them to become a premium subscriber. So we do both churn nudging and upsell nudging in this example. And in a real life example, maybe the rules are just as simple as these, or it could be as complex as us go calling out to an external system running a machine learning model to classify your users and uh, bring that information back. 
And the final step here is just to make sure that we name and format all the fields in a way that your billing system can understand. So we transform them a little bit with a field mapping, making sure that all the fields are named something that makes sense to your billing system. And there we go. If this looks just like something that would appear in an invoice to you, that's because that's exactly what it is. Like a line item, you have a period, a quantity, a user, a product. And that's what the billing system needs in order to put a price to this consumption and finally produce a bill so you can send it to your customers and get paid. We can also take the same information and just use it. We, we take away all the billing things and just create a message which we could use to send an email. So we can send an email with a thank you message. We can send an email with a nudging message using the same data but for a completely different purpose. This goes to billing, this goes to email.